terrific timing. I remember Tom Ocker telling me about a lob similar to that that uh, Richard Krychek played against Michael Stich at Wimbledon. That was uh, exceptional by Krychek. Yeah. Henman, I expect to hit them more often than Krychek does. I think he's, by and large, got better hands than the Dutchman. back and volley it's a part of the treasury of this game I just want just wonder whether that return from uh, Henman wasn't going out but uh, the theory is if you're in doubt you hit out at the ball teasing lob, lobs that's yeah. can he play by Henman I don't think by instinct he's a lobber I think he likes the adrenaline of hitting passing shots no but we saw him play one very early in the match and of course uh, he'll know and many players will know that uh, this man is vulnerable to the lob or more, more importantly vulnerable to his own smash no. he needs a, a long wind up for the smash often miss hits Going to be out, it is. Hedman had a go at the forehand there. A risky shot. But he, he enjoys risks. And he has a chance here to go 6-5 up. Well, there's almost nothing you can do because you just know that Edward's going to kick that serve out wide to your backhand. No, he missed it. Decided wisely, I think, not to uh, go for the backhand volley again. I suppose what you can do really is stand over very wide to your left if you're Henman and uh, insist upon Edberg going down the middle of the court. Edberg goes ahead 6-5. The crowd seemed to like that. There's still absolutely nothing in this match. A, remind, a reminder to uh, Major League Baseball buffs who've tuned in hoping to watch their favorite Five. sport we this hope they'll be generous and understand that uh, we're staying with this one to the end of the match these things even out you know yes we actually saw Cedric Peelin the other day get so frustrated with Goran Ivanisevic's serves no it was Philippus's serves that he actually held the racket uh, by the head and slugged one I think it was into left field Quite Thank you. Fifteen dollars. Got such a lovely lazy stylish stroke of the ball on that backhand timeless shot almost that you expect him never to miss but the timing was completely awry there He certainly hasn't been at his uh, usual self in that department, Edberg. Playing uh, well below par on the backhand side. Return of serve. Oh. 
Well, set it up beautifully. And it's one of the problems when eventually he makes one, when he's given the simple shot, he's still thinking about the fact that finally he's made one. So important for Hen Henman to just keep him playing. Both uh, Edberg and Henman have only served the one love game each, and both of those were in the first set. Hedman's second love game, and we've got a tie break, which is what uh, decided the first set. And there was a sequence of points there by Hedman that uh, I think, looking back so far, were his best of the match. He won the tie, tie break by seven points to two. So on this tie break rests whether Edberg will level the match at one set all, or Hedman will go to two sets to love up. Yes, of course, the better player's got to win it, but I always feel if they're two tiebreakers, really, the, the person who's lost the first one ought to win the second. There's just so little in it. Pacey passing shots by Henman, just troubling Edberg. He actually playing almost as if he's playing at night. He was uh, really a trouble when he uh, played at night uh, some nights ago, mistiming the ball, lost perspective. One Hanman impressively Two, one, unhurried. Two, this isn't uh, some bright upstart going out, giving it his best and ha having a fling at everything. This is a sensible, mature, calculated match that he's playing. Well, it can always be sickening for someone like Henman because uh, this could so easily have been as hit as hard as that uh, a double fault by Edberg. crowd uh, beginning to be heard now and making themselves known they're for the great champion departing the stage by and large Final turn by Edberg, and uh, at a key moment in this tie break, it gives him 4 2. 4 2, Edberg. Yes, I think it, Henman, it's important for him really to uh, try and find the flow here rather quickly. Keep going for his shots. He doesn't want to hold up off the ball because that's just going to make it float and give Edberg more time.
Second double fault of the match. point that was the master well I thought it uh, Edberg was undone by the lob from Henman but in the end just turning the tables with sheer class the defensive lob he put up was uh, terrific four chances here four points for Edberg square the match one set all that's going to be it. One said all. Crowd like it. Once all. Sorry to the Major League Baseball fans who are tuning in, hoping to watch their favourite sport. Bye, please. Thank you. Well, he's uh, nevertheless got to improve, even though he won that point. He's really got to improve his uh, percentage of first serves. Because he doesn't want Edberg to be hitting that backhand approach harder and harder. He's uh, got away with a lot so far because Edberg hasn't. Henman doing to Edberg what Edberg so successfully did to him, putting up that uh, very high defensive lob. The shadows which you see encroaching across the court, of course, they have lived with. So not particularly vital, although if they sh would affect uh, one player more than the other, I would say Edberg, given that he doesn't like night play. Sixty percent first serve. Now it's getting better for Mahanaman. Oh. Game, Mahanaman. 